My name's Edna Davis. I was born August 12th, 1931 at the City Hospital at Fayetteville. This interview is for the Farmington Oral History Project, and we just want to verify that we have your permission to reuse this interview. Yes, yes. I'm proud that you're doing it. And tell me, who were your parents? Uh, Clifford and uh, Nora Collins Robinson. I grew up uh, around Farmington, I mean, Tawny Town in the uh, Springdale area. Harmon, went to school at Harmon. Okay, uh, tell me about your family. Who were your siblings? I had no siblings. Okay, uh, what kind of business was your family in? Farm, everybody. My dad was, uh, wasn't was able to work, and so mom and I raised chickens, raised what we eat. Okay. Uh, what other, what was your part in the family business? Uh, raising the farm, uh -huh. what, what was your part? I just worked. I had, the, I had to milk the cows and uh, I hated those old cows. <laughs> go, go after them in the wet, do and weeds. And then I helped with the chickens. Then you didn't have running water, you had to draw your water. And then uh, we got a pump, so I really felt uptown then, but we still had to call. We had, I guess it was three gallon water fountains that we carried. And then we had uh, got our, our uh, feed in 100 pound sacks. We used the sacks to make dresses out of, or anything else, sheets, tea towels, whatever we needed. We used feed sacks. Uh, what other jobs did you work when you were growing up? Well, I, I was pretty well there. I, it's, when I was in high school, I think I was uh, 16. During vacation one year, I worked at a five and 10 cent store at Springdale. And then uh, when uh, my mom remarried after my daddy died to Albert Davis, and when uh, we went to, uh, he was in the service, so we went to Lawton, Oklahoma. And I worked at Montgomery Wards during Christmas vacation. And then I married real young, so. Tell me about your husband, who was your husband? Roland Davis, he was from, uh, Seminole, Oklahoma, Maud, little town, and uh, he worked in the oil fields and continued to do so, drove an oil field truck when we, after we got married for about 10 years, we moved to back to Springdale. Okay, uh, tell me about when you guys moved to Farmington, what year was it, and just tell me a little bit about it. Uh, 1963. My uncle was building the laundry here in Farmington, and he wanted us to move up and and uh, run it for him, take care of it. The house was there. Uh, the people that he'd bought it from was an old couple, and they'd retired. So uh, he. Uh, Tell me what the, what the laundry was like when you first started there. Describe it the best you can remember. Well, it was really nice for Farmington. It was really, we had not very many business, just the little stores, you know, just Miss White's and McNeil's. Well, Miss White's wasn't there anymore after, you know, a few years and uh, McNeil's. And then there was one on the corner where the tobacco story is now on 170 and 62. And in our little store, and uh, between here and Fayetteville, there was, I remember one house that was on the north side, and there just wasn't very many people at all. So we, it was a wonderful little place. Um, tell me uh, what other Businesses you remember in Farmington and, and some when you first got here. You mentioned some of the stores. What else did you remember in Farmington when you got here? 
just the schools. That's the first thing we came to see, it was the school. And uh, we had the sixth grade classes was in the basement of an old school. And I, it was looked so dreary. And, but if when I went, when class was in session, it was good. It was a good learning place. So I didn't feel bad anymore about, I worried about them not having a good place to go. And I'm so thankful now for all of our schools that the kids have got, we've got the new high school and just keep building. We've had some awful good people, uh, school boards, uh, superintendents and all through the years that's worked hard. We, uh, our school was very important to us. Roland and I worked a lot with the young people, loved it. That was our main thing. Uh, tell, I know your husband spent some time working for the school. Tell me about that. Yes, he drove school bus for a little over 20 years. And he enjoyed that so much. Lots of people said, how do you stand them mean kids? Roland said, I've never had a mean kid. He didn't know. And if they misbehaved, he put them on the front seat, and they hated that. But uh, he liked, he, he just liked it. And he was uh, stoic and stern looking, you know, but he wasn't, he was a teddy bear, you know. He just, he just looked, and he was grandpa, you know, to the little kids. Uh, uh, when you were working at the store, what was it like? Uh, tell me some of your customers that you remember, some of the people when you first got here. Who were some of the first customers and people in town you remember? Uh, Miss Jewel D. Mitchell and her husband was taking the mayor's position for a little while from uh, Mr. White. He'd gotten sick and so he took over the duties. And then it, they were both old, so, you know, it was hard for either one of them, but good, good people. Uh, Chester and Noreen Stevens moved it. They had five children, including a set of twins, and they moved here in 63 also. He was a mechanic, and uh, they became our best friends, really good, close friends. And uh, Conduff, Bill and Lois Conduff. Uh, <laughs> my mind went blank. Uh, Tell me about how you went from having a laundry to a store. Kind of give me a timeline mm -hmm. and kind of tell the story the best you remember. Yes, that. well. Uh, the people at the laundry needed change. They needed soaps and bleaches and stuff for the laundry. So we decided we went, Uncle Oscar owned the house, the building, so we went into business sharing with Oscar and Ruby Collins. And we did the work and they furnished the house and did the utilities. So. Uh, In June of uh, 1964, we opened up our little store. We bought, we had all the laundry supplies and we had, a, I bought, ordered a half a case of all the staple things. Now you can't, you have to get several cases, you know, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't buy half a case for nothing. <laughs> that was, <laughs> But uh, we had a, we worked hard, but we we enjoyed it. Just wonderful. We had lots of didn't make much money, but we we made good friends. You know, we just we uh, and that's the only thing I hated. We was there twenty six years. We raised our kids, and they all graduated from Farmington. Four. We had our nephew for a while, and uh, we just spent lots of wonderful days. 
Talk about kind of your routine there at the store. What time would you open and what all would you do in a typical day? Well, uh, when we started out, we opened at 6 in the morning till 8. And we each 5 or 10 years, we started closing the gap there. We'd open at 7 or 6, you know. But uh, it... Over the years, we just, uh, we lived here nearby and people would knock on the door and either need something or need to use the telephone, slide off of the ditch. The curb was right there then by the store before they got it fixed better. And uh, it wasn't anything for somebody to, to knock on the door at four or five in the morning wanting Roland to uh, come and open the store so they could use the phones or come make coffee or <laughs> he'd, when he had to do that he'd just make coffee and invite everybody in for coffee because it was cold you know but uh, it was a good it was a good place to to get in out of the cold so we uh, um. Tell me about your kids. Well, we had four. Uh, Ronnie Davis was the oldest. We had Tommy, Nora, and Greg was 10 years younger than the first three, Nora. But uh, we really enjoyed our family. We, that's why we were so interested in the school. We had uh, ball games, and we helped make it possible. Lots of good parents, George and Carl Wolf, and uh, I can't remember who all, but they, we all, we had pie suppers. We had anything we could to get uniforms and things for the kids to enjoy their play, their summertime. We had lots of competition on those ball games. One time, uh, my boys hauled hay. They uh, got a truck, Ronnie and Tommy both got a truck each. And, and Greg was uh, five or six, but he could uh, drive. I don't know how he did in the hay field, but he drove for them. And, uh, there's several boys hauled hay. So one day the coach called and said that Mountainburg had called and we had a game canceled that we didn't know about. But they said, be there or forfeit. So he said, can you get a hold of any of the boys? So Roland went after our, they were all in the hay field. And uh, Roland went after our boys and I got on the phone and I, I called the lady where Butch Condiff was working, and uh, Dale, Jimmy Nickham, I can't remember all the boys, but we got a hold of them. And uh, Dale Nickham was a big boy. And he went home to get his uniform, and it was wet. It was still in the washing machine. so. <laughs> Uh, all the way down there, we we took three cars. Our, Ronnie was able to drive then in my car and Ron's pickup because couldn't bus wasn't supposed to go, you know, without a okay. And uh, so we went uh, all traveled down there with Dale hanging his uniform out the window. <laughs> We've got lots of fun stories. If I could just think of them, we're just. Uh, You talked earlier about how much you like sending your kids to Farmington School, how you were a little concerned at first, but you really liked it. Tell me more about what it was like to send your kids to school at Farmington. Well, it just, I guess, we was proud of our school. We worked hard. Mr. Ledbetter was one of the superintendents that worked so hard, and he cared about the kids. He just, um, George Ledbetter and his wife, 
they attended every ball game that I think we ever had. And, uh, and he bought all the kids popcorn. And I bet there's no telling how many pairs of shoes he's bought during that time. So, uh, of course, Roland driving the school bus, you know, he was a part of, part of it. He knew all the kids and it was good. It was good there, but uh, the, the learning part was really good. I mean, they had really good teachers and once in a while, you know, every school has one that doesn't really know how to do things, but uh, on the whole, you couldn't beat Farmington. One time, uh, a few people wanted to uh, send it to Fayetteville. We, that's the only time that Roland and I took sides in, on any political thing. We, uh, We helped pay a lawyer and put an ad in the paper, you know. And, but our school was worth saving. If you take the school out, you don't have a community. But anyway, that's the only time that we ever took sides on the political. A lot of the little ladies would come and ask Roland who to vote for, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we had several little old... Uh, widows, you know, around. But, but uh, I don't think our school, when Ronnie graduated, I think there was 26 graduated from his class. And uh, he, when we, we went to Springdale before we came up here, Ronnie was in the seventh grade. He got the highest uh, score learning highest honor or whatever when in the seventh grade for the boys. There was girls that was higher in the testing, you know, but, and Ronnie never told me about it. And my cousin called to congratulate me and told me. And then we came down here and uh, he was in sports and just had a good time, but he didn't come out first. He really, I think they learned they had some good learning here. I just was, have always been proud. Uh, Ronnie, we had one one uh, graduating senior. We had one first grader. So uh, that was that was interesting. I didn't have that broad. I got to be homeroom mother for several years from the time my kids started in Duncan, Oklahoma till we ended in Farmington. And uh, I love, I guess if I had to choose the three, this, this three schools naturally, I would choose Farmington. But uh, Springdale and Duncan were bigger, but, but I don't think they got a better education. The only way they could is in different uh, teaching different, more, more subjects. But uh, I'm really proud of our schools. We've just had some, some wonderful lessons. And well, tell me about the sports. That was always a big part of your yes, it was participation. Well, what all did they do, and what was your part in it? Well, my part was just helping make pies and stuff for pie suppers and we put them on you know it was all a lot of work or anything else we could do to make money for them and uh, then uh, of course I, we like to have them here at the house or they like to come by the store and we'd make them a sandwich or they'd get them a pop and candy bar you know or something but we had we had lots of good good athletes I thought but uh, Roland loved all athlete, all athletics. He he likes. Well, I, right now I still turn on the ball games because I'm so used to it. You know, I don't know that much about it, but I had four boys that did. So 
three boys and rolling. But uh, um. my boys, Ronnie played ball. Tommy did. Tommy's favorite was basketball. Ronnie played football. I thought that was his favorite, but evidently not because he's coaching basketball. He coached football to begin, though, with Coach Allen Holland. But, uh, what, can, what do you remember about that team, that state championship team? Did you follow them? They, oh, yeah. yeah. Tell me all you remember about I'm that. I'm sure that uh, Roland or I, one was there, or both, if we couldn't both go. Well, I know Coach Holland was really, I mean, he made them do their best. He just pushed them, and, and Ronnie uh, worked with him for I don't know how long, but uh, I think that was in 1970. I'm not sure what year it was in the 70s, but uh, those little boys was really... Back then, when they'd go to a ball game, they didn't have fast food stores like they do now. They can, so I made sandwiches, put them in a cooler, and they'd have another one for their drinks, and they'd go wherever, Ashdown or wherever they went. You know, I don't know if that was a place they went or not, but uh, sometimes Roland drove the bus for them, and. Uh, so they, uh, those boys was close. You know, they were really close. I think, I think they knew what the other one was thinking. You know, they just. Uh, uh, did your family attend church anywhere in Farmington? Yes. And if so, where'd you go? When we came, we, I had gone to Methodist Church all my life, and we, so we started at the Methodist Church, and we kept the store open on Sundays, so. The kids and I went, some, and then uh, Nora started going to this little Baptist church down here, right near us, because it was easy for her to uh, just walk down there, and the kids, we went there, and I didn't get to go all the time, but, uh, and then, uh, we, Greg was into, in going into the Church of Christ, and so we started going with him. So we're all Church of Christ, and uh, so and we've enjoyed that very much. When your kids were young and living in Farmington, what did they do with their friends for fun? Well, we rode horses and. I don't remember. I can remember the basketball team coming down here. I had two three-pound jars of peanut butter sitting on the bar. So evidently we had peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> but, uh, they, and they were dressed up. You know, they, they didn't go to the ball game in their t-shirts. They wore a, a dress shirt, button-down shirt. And, and they were you know, they were proud of themselves, their teams. They, I've got uh, memories of, we had couching in there then, and, uh, and a TV in there, but uh, they'd just come around, come around. If it was cold, you know, we'd stay inside, and otherwise they'd be out playing ball or, or whatever. There's, but we had horses when they grew up more. And Ronnie uh, raises Missouri Fox, Fox Trotters. He goes to the shows, him and his family. And uh, my grandkids are, lots of them are cowboys, them little cowgirls. I have some uh, Greg's little girls are really into cow, into horses. They like rodeos, junior rodeos. One of them got to go to the nationals, and uh, well, two of them got to go to the nationals. So we we're just a sports family. We just 
I can't go now and help. I like to get excited about every game. You know, we can, and I wasn't always just for our team. That's what, you know, I was, I was for the kids. I just like to see them do good, you know. Of course, I wanted to win, but I'd like to see if they won, that's okay. We tried, you know. But uh, but I think the sportsmanship and the togetherness is what what's good for for our tent ball school ball. We uh, when you and your husband first moved to Farmington, what would you and your friends you met here? What would y'all do for fun? Well, uh, we like to go to music shows. Roland fished. He fished every chance he got. And uh, they had, uh, they started a Lions Club. And so they had turkey shoots. And uh, of course I could go shopping if I wasn't at the store. Or uh, like I said, to a music show and or movies. Wherever the kids, if they had banquets, I was, I was with that. And Roland went to all of the, like, like Weddington picnic or something, because I couldn't swim, so he went there. And uh, we we tried to take a part in everything the kids did. It was hard sometimes because we, you know, we had things to do. We really had to work around that. But that's what we enjoyed, being with them. Uh, tell me about your husband's involvement with the local volunteer fire department. What did he do and how did he get involved in that? Well, there was just a few that was, well, everybody was interested, but a few could do it. Uh, Bill Andrews, Roland, several, but anyway, Bill Andrews was the only one that knew anything about the he had worked at the Fayetteville Fire Department. So he was uh, the chief and Roland was the assistant. And he stayed the assistant for 20 some years because he didn't like to talk in front of a group. He just, he just wouldn't. And uh, I thought Marion Bailey said it pretty good. He said uh, they used CD to fight City Hall for them and Roland to repair, fix, you know, think about things they needed. But, uh, so it worked really good. You know, they worked for a lot of, well, over 20 years together. Bill, I can't remember why Bill didn't get to stay too long, but he was very instrumental in getting it started. And Lloyd Wayne Luganbuehl helped us. And I think that was 1972. And then we got a, An old truck out pickup. Wayne Prince was working for the Fish and Game Commission, and some way they gave it to Farmington Fire Department. So they paint, they fixed it up and painted it. And Roland was building inspector for a few years, and he drove that fire truck everywhere. Everybody knew him, and. Uh, we had the honor of being, I can't think of my words anymore, uh, at the Christmas parade. Uh, Grand Marshals, is that what that's called? And uh, we, we just enjoyed the people. You know, like one of the young men hollered out, well, there's Roland Davis, you know, on the, on the parade. And, uh, it was just fun. It, we just enjoyed our life in Farmington. It's just, I don't think that we could have enjoyed it, it anymore, anywhere else. It's just been a, a good place for us. We got the keys to the city one time. We started a, the Lions Club, did a lot of good for the sports, and uh, they uh, bought quite a few glasses and, and one set of hearing aids. We, uh, 
we started, uh, they came down here one night and I uh, know Juanita and Don Anderson, uh, GC and Juanita Watson, I can't remember how many came, but uh, we started making little fruit baskets for our widows and widowers, the older people, and uh, we made 65 and we had them on the couch and we had them everywhere. And uh, the next year, the Lions Club had folded. So Joanne Thomas, she was a Hickman. She just grew up here and, and she said, uh, I'll help you, Edna. So we fixed an uh, experimental lab over here that was on Double Springs Road, furnished just cooked chicken. And uh, so we fixed for the elderly there on Double Springs Road, the apartments. And uh, we had them a nice, a nice dinner. And uh, we, we just like to do things like that. And uh, then after that, it got big. We got lots of people, you know, and older and needy. And uh, so Margie said, well, I'll bet that Margie Hickman Smith said, I bet the uh, police department would like to help you with that. So she wrote letters to the business people and they sent money and we made big fruit, fruit baskets and grocery bags. And uh, the last year that we got to do that, we had 380 something bags. It, then we had extended, we had one in Lincoln you know, the area. It wasn't just Farmington, it was it was the Farmington area. But uh, then we all got old. We couldn't <laughs> we couldn't do that. But uh, Wanda Spears always helped. She was a, a good she and I are about the same age. And uh, she called us the eighties ladies. <laughs> Uh, tell me about the annual fireman's breakfast. How did that start and how big a deal is that for this little town? Oh, it's a big deal. When the first one, and I can't remember what year, but it was soon after that they'd started. And uh, our little ladies, our little uh, widows, all got dressed up and some of them, you know, didn't, I mean, none of them drove. So we had to take them to the breakfast but they were so dressed up and they just visited and had the best time you know they'd been here forever and uh, it was so funny that that was their social of the year and we did good for the fire department everybody has always supported our fire department that's the good thing about Farmington the people really help the people. It's just like, well, I don't know ever. I don't know hardly anybody now, but so many. I've lost so many of my friends. But uh, we uh, we just uh, had love those little old people. We just. Roland said that we'd try to take care of the kids and the old people and the rest of them were able to take care of themselves. So we really tried to do that and, and loved it. We loved every minute of it. Who are some of the firemen that you remember that he worked with? You've mentioned some of them, but mm -hmm. kind of go through the list of who all you remember. Well, I remember, uh, of course, Roland, C.D. and Bill, uh, Keith Cooper, uh, Eldon Swift, Jerry Shannon, uh, Loy Phillips, uh, Ernie Taylor. Uh, when their school burnt one time, Ernie was in the basement and he got too much smoke. It, that was our scariest time. And then one night, a uh, car was coming around the corner and uh, 
took the curve too fast and landed upside down against Bob Cunningham's station and garage. And there was a man died in it in the burn in the fire, and that really did hurt our fire boys. That uh, they they just you know they did lots of good. They go help people if they needed it, and the firemen. I can't remember uh, Bob Baylor, Mark Cunningham. Of course, Mark's son is super now. Brad, he's a, a first responder. He's had all the lessons and everything on it. He's good. He's he's not just he knows what he's doing, but he's also kind and you know what people need when they're hurting or sick. So uh, we had uh, Keith Keith Cooper. Uh, I can't remember those kids' names. They, uh, two of them, uh, Roland, a lot of them smoked, a lot of them didn't. But these two in particular, and I can't even think of their names, but Roland told them, if I can quit, you can quit. So they did, they just, they just, but I mean, there's lots of good came out of the fire department other than you know, uh, Christ-like lessons, you know, we just, and the, and the women now, we've got uh, Laverne Cooper wanted to start a little club. Well, they have the Red Hat Club, and uh, we are the re ladies that retired, their husbands retired from the fire department. They, uh, it's just the older ones. The younger ones don't have time. You know, they're just too busy. But uh, we uh, call ourselves the red hat ladies of the, you know, the fire department's on, the name's on it too, Farmington Fire Department. But the vol it was a volunteer and it's, you just can't imagine what all a volunteer does. And they probably, I know we got more good out of it than the people that we helped. You know, we just, but uh, it was, you know, they'd call two or three o'clock in the morning and it might be icy. <laughs> you know, that's when they need you. It's when, when it's icy and bad. But they've had lots of, lots of calls and and they've done more good for our town than anybody can imagine. Not only helping people, but our insurance, you know, the better the fire department got, the less our insurance got. So that really helped. And some of them didn't even know, you know, that that it was, do, that it, the boys was doing that for us. But uh, I, I still, I would just do anything for those firemen, they're just, you just can't imagine how much I appreciate them and hold them in awe. You know, they just, I don't know all of them now, but I know we've had, through the years, Roland was there 20 some years, and then we was always invited to the Christmas dinner or anything that they had, but uh, um, of course I haven't got to go in years, but. But I still really respect those kids. They just, and it was really something for Farmington. And now look at our nice one up there on the highway. It's just, our little community has grown. It's just unreal. But I'm prouder over the schools, the sports complex. We've just come a long, long ways in 54 years that I've been here. Let's talk about the amazing growth of Farmington, how small it was when you started here and what it's like now. Tell me what you can remember about the growth. I can't remember uh, how many people was here, but uh, my cousin said now that, uh, 
Farmington has the people that Springdale had when he was in school, and that was the 1950s. So we have grown big time, and uh, I, you know, ever everybody that lived here, I think, or the biggest biggest majority of them has helped. Anything that needs to be done, all you had to do was ask. One time. Uh, we didn't have any kids in school anymore, but my son was at the fair. He had his two girls, and uh, one, he went by the Farmington PTA booth, and uh, she said, hey, aren't you a Davis? And he said, yes, ma'am. And she said, well, get me some help in here. I'm leaving this place, and I mean it. So Tommy came and called me. He said, Mom, I don't know what to do, but said she's leaving. and. Uh, so I called Dolly McCraddock down the street, and we went up and, and worked the PTA concession stand at the fair. And uh, I mean, just little things like that. All you have to do is ask somebody will help, or anybody then would help. And uh, we, had, we had such good time. We had a lady that lived on the corner here by us, J.D. Brown, and uh, she was a very private person, but a really good neighbor. And you know, you can learn from old people. You can learn so much. Just uh, Eric Walker told me that that's what his mom, well, he told it at a uh, FHA dinner that his mom told him to always stop and listen to the old people because you could learn from them. But not many kids know that. You know, that's they don't have time for old people. They just don't know nothing, you know. <laughs> and we are so far behind. You know, my kids, I, I can't do all of that electronic stuff that they do. My little ones can do more on the computer than I can do. My five-year-old, you know, than I can do. But uh, I'm thankful for what I can do. It's really something when compared to when I grew up and had no telephones. Uh, we had, I was thinking the other day, I was sitting here uh, and I thought I've got the telephones, the computer, the TV, anything. I've got books. The, our library is the biggest thing, I think, for me personally, that's happened to our town. We've tried several times to get it, to get one. In the 80s, we'd all tried, and it just wasn't possible. But everything just worked out. You know, we used the city hall for the old city hall for a while when they moved into their new one. Uh, we have a library now because of Betty Hummel. She has worked and and put lots of money in it, other than the than the work. And I wanted, and lots of people wanted to name it. I think Ernie Penn did too, wanted to name our library the Betty Hummel Library. It should have been, but uh, she didn't want that. She's very private, wonderful, and, and our library is due to her. I tried to help, but I was having lots of heart problems at the time. But I got to be on the board for about 10 years, and I, I enjoyed that a lot. So uh, we, uh, now, I, I have lots of books brought to me by friends, but uh, Joyce Nance brings me lots of books. I like to read the inspirational. Now I don't. Now I don't read anything that learning books because I can't remember it. I just. Uh, I think the only book I read for knowledge is my Bible, but uh, the rest of them I just read for enjoyment. But they've got everything in up the library that. You know, they have computers, printers. It's just it's just unreal that we've got all that stuff, and I'm so thankful for it. 
our little towns come a long ways. We've had some good mayors. Ernie's a good mayor, I think. We've just, he's been here, I can't remember how many years, but he, uh, he's been here a long time. He still remembers the bologna sandwiches at the store anyway, <laughs> when they were growing up. But uh, that's, you know, it's the people that makes the town. We couldn't, I just don't think we could have a better place. Of course, there's, you get a bad apple in the barrel every once in a while, you know, but I guess you would do that anywhere. If some, if you had to tell somebody about your town of Farmington, mm -hmm. and they had never been to Farmington before, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? I would tell them that the first, the people are wonderful, neighbors, uh, giving all, you know, the people come first. And then I would tell them all of the qualities that we have. Our school, if you have children, the schools can't be beat, I don't think. And the sports. They have everything the kids need. They have, we have our churches, we have every denomination that I know, you know, unless it's some, something new, foreign that I don't know about. We have all the, all the church, we have lots of good churches in Farmington. And uh, our fire department, our library, just, I mean, I don't know of anything that we would need there may be things that would be entertained, but I couldn't believe that we have all of the uh, little cafes, all of the little stops, you know, that we never d didn't dream about having. And we've got, uh, now we're getting a Taco Bell. I said to Dairy Queen, you couldn't beat that, you know, just Sonic and uh, McDonald, it's it's amazing that in the sandwich shop, it's we. Uh, I don't think you could live in a better place. I just don't. Not for your education, for your family, or for your choice of churches. It's just I'm sold on Farmington. <laughs> Fifty-four years we've lived here, and that's, uh, I think that's long enough to really know the town. We have a good police department now. I don't know the people there now. Uh, I know the police chief and the, and, the, and the young lady, and I can't think of her name, but that's all that I know, and they're, you know, but I'm sure they're good people. I've never needed to call them, but if I did, I think they'd be right here. I see one pass every once in a while, and that makes me feel better, you know, this, uh, that they're out looking and watching, you know. So, but we started out when, when we came to Farmington soon after, we had one police, one policeman, that was Bill Langford, and I think he used his own car with a red light that he put on top. And uh, Roland rode with him on nights that they thought might be busy, you know. He's, and uh, he got to be a part, a policeman for a little while. But, uh, and then we got bigger and better on that, on our police department too. But, you know, I don't know a lot about that. When Mort, was there and Dennis Reed and uh, I can't think of the other one that I thought a lot of, but uh, he's passed away. We've had uh, Holcomb was his name, and uh, but Mort's still with us, and Mort's done an awful lot of good for our town. Mort Marshall, and he's. He was there for a long time until he got disabled, and he's just, uh, I know every time I needed something, he, we had a bean supper one night for our fire department, 
and the police department always helped. Um, Jim Hankins was our police chief at the time, and uh, he, his mom had a big garden, and I told him, I asked him if he would uh, bring me enough onions for a bouquet that I wanted to uh, crown Joanne Thomas being queen of Farmington because she cooked the best beans. <laughs> so she, he went and got me some onions and I made a bouquet. I made a bouquet, you know, with a big bow on it. And he presented it to her at one of the bean suppers. We did silly things, you know, fun things. But the only thing about that, I used my daughter's tear and we never did remember to get it back. <laughs> she, she is a... But it was fun. It, I mean, we didn't just just work. We had lots of fun with it, too. But uh, uh, Paul Giles built built uh, our youngest son a go-kart one time, real low on the ground. Paul was getting pretty old. And he rode it from his house out where the Methodist, New Methodist Church is now. He rode it up here and uh, just, you know, just to do things for people, you know, he just a kid, just that's Joe Giles' his dad. And uh, so it, it was just a fun, fun place to live. If I had you complete this sentence, how would you do it? <laughs> My favorite thing about Farmington is? The library. The people first, and then the library. My church, and my people, and my library. That's the three. You know, I know you'd have to go on the police and the fire department and city hall and all, but if I just had one thing to choose, I guess it would be church. But then, then the people has always been good. And uh, then the library. It's very special to me. It's I've wanted a library for ever since I've been here, you know. And uh, that's that was the only difference in here in a big town was our library, and and that's what I why I'm so uh, proud. We had uh, Edith McAllister and uh, you know I can't think of the ones. I can't remember names anymore, but uh, we had uh, I just I just can't remember their names, but we really had some good people that helped start our Ladina uh, Melon X. Uh, uh, it was one of our superintendents passed. He's school superintendent. He helped. He was on the board for a little while, and he got too old. We've uh, there's always somebody that'll help a volunteer, and but I'm just our schools, I guess. Of course, I don't. I have. Lots of kids in school now. I have uh, great grandkids, and uh, um, it's just really bigger and better, you know. Just any other stories I haven't thought to ask you about that you I want to add? I can't think right now. I don't. I know there is. I'll probably think of some after you leave. Just fun things, but uh, my son says. Greg, he has this old farmer's advice that you live a good life and you live it twice. Well, we've lived a good life in Farmington, and that living it twice is my memories. I have lots of fun memories, you know. Sometimes I can just sit here and laugh, and I think I hope nobody sees me, you know. <laughs> they sure enough think I'm loony. But... Uh, I didn't know what that advice meant until I got older, and, and you do live it twice. It's, uh, but we've, uh, 
our youngest son uh, works at the co-op and he raises pigs. Mr. Hummel is his idol. Roy Hummel, he, he was our agri teacher for many years. And uh, I think Mr. Hummel helps Greg a lot because they give pigs to kids that want one that can't get one. And uh, I know that Mr. Hummel has helped Greg provide that, you know, in the past. If, probably if Greg told him, he would be right there to help, you know. But they, uh, the kids, it provides the kids a outlet to work hard, an incentive. And uh, then uh, some of my kids are in the rodeos at Lincoln, you know, Lincoln Rodeo. And they're, uh, they're little, but they sure, they can sure ride those horses. <laughs> it scares me. <laughs> but it's just, uh, I, I can't think of any good, good lessons right now to tell you, but it's been a good ride. We've, I couldn't, I don't think that I could live in a better place as Farmington.